One of the things that makes Boston College unique is that there is a very strong focus on imbuing the students with a set of values, a set of characteristics they'll carry with them uh, into their professional lives and thinking very carefully about what are those values? What do we want people to take when they leave the building? To think about, you know, that, again, that notion of what can I give back to the community? How can I make a difference? How can I use my skills to improve people's lives? And to me, that's the central mission, the central value system that BC Law has always stood for and that I imagine will stand for going forward. Before I got to law school, uh, I was a public school teacher. I taught middle school for about seven years, and then I taught four years of high school. As a school teacher, I was an advocate for children and for youth, and I figured it was time for me to take my advocacy into another realm. I've long desired being an attorney, and so I figured if not now, then when? Boston College was my inevitable choice ever since I stepped foot on this campus. People were so genuinely kind and open and very friendly, and I felt a connection to this place. There was a, a, a spirit that I had never felt nor expected at a law school, and I knew right away this was the place for me. I've learned that where I think I fit in the legal world is ultimately helping to frame some of our nation's laws. 10, 15 years, perhaps in Congress and some representational capacity, and Boston College has helped me come to that decision because it has uh, it's given me the sense of purpose, the sense of great moral duty. That's what you get from, from this school. I have a career before law school in international relations. I spent about 10 years working on development work and post-conflict peace building. I started thinking about going to law school when I um, was working in Macedonia and realizing that the work I did wasn't really having the effect that I'd hoped. I started thinking about taking a career where I could actually help people one at a time. Our charity started as an independent study at Boston College Law School. We provide high school education, scholarships, and social support to girls in a small village of former Yugoslavia, Morani, Macedonia. Our purpose is to help girls get through all four years of high school. Already you can see that attitudes about sending girls to high school have changed, and the families that we've served are enormously grateful and supportive of our work. I felt from the day that I started school that anything I wanted to do that was going to have a social justice impact was going to be supported by Boston College Law School. There were three or four professors who had a major impact on me. Each of them were very different. Each of them had a great concern for the well-being and welfare of their students. And all of them were concerned about the impacts of the law on individuals' lives. I think that's an important element of justice that, uh, that distinguishes us from a lot of other law schools. The law is not just a neutral principle, but it exists to improve people's lives. Tax law very starkly raises the conflict between justice and efficiency. In, in the debate about what justice is and what society should be doing, quite frequently, if you listen closely, you start to hear that there's a conflict between what people think is the most efficient approach to running a society versus what they feel is the fairest. I think when I graduated from law school, I always hoped at some point I would be teaching. In the position I'm in now, I still can have a major influence on public policy. I do a lot of consulting with the IRS, with the Justice Department, with various members of Congress. But at the same time, as a teacher, I get the pleasure of watching the light go on in somebody's face, and, and that's great. You know, that's, that's uh, something that's hard to replace. In my career development, I focused in two major areas. One was a company I had formed in law school, IHRDC, which has now done business in probably 125 countries. The second side of all that, the gas storage facilities, the first one I built was 1975. It was the first independent gas storage field in the country. Every day I come to work, I really look forward to it. It's enjoyable. And the law school allowed me to do that, both from the point of view of teaching senior management programs to executives all over the world, or developing and building projects that require a knowledge of a broad areas of the law and technology, markets, operations. 
it allowed me to do that as well. I'm now working on some opportunities, I think, that exist for providing energy to the poorest of the poor. The way of doing that is to provide communities with the know-how and the technology and the process they can follow, and then letting them build that on a local basis. And I wouldn't be surprised if students at the law school who focus on business take that knowledge of business and teach other people, in many cases like I have, how to develop and manage and run businesses, either at the small scale or at the national level or even at the international level where people can make a major difference. My specialty is big case complex litigation. 9-11 happened. I volunteered to run the firm's program for the families of 9-11. I had no idea what it meant. I thought, who doesn't have a problem I can't solve in three months? And it ended up that I worked for those families for free for approximately two and a half years and do today. We helped firefighters' families, office workers' families, and closest to my heart, perhaps, were the low-income immigrant families, primarily the widows and orphans of the restaurant workers. They had immediate short-term needs, paying the rent, buying food, paying for medicine. What we did for the 9-11 families is to apply a new model for the delivery of pro bono services. And that new model was based on a general counsel relationship. We offered to help them in the entirety of their needs. In working with the immigrant families, I reached out to uh, Professor Canstrom and to Mary Halper of Boston College Law School and asked them to work with me on crafting legislation that would give green card status to the spouses and children of the 9-11 victims. That's been a terrific collaboration, a wonderful collaboration, and they have given of themselves and their heart and their skills, and it has made a real difference. One of the hallmarks of Boston College always has been that it's not just the elite that attend school here. Boston College has always opened the door when other schools weren't opening the doors to those various ethnic groups. And that's something that financial aid and donations enables us to continue and to grow upon. Supporting Boston College Law School in any way you can is very important. BC Law School teaches you to be a very fine lawyer, but it teaches you something more than that. It teaches you a love of the law, and it teaches you a respect for it, and a respect for what it can do. And we need an institution that imbues its students with a sense of purpose. There's such a need, I think, for social justice. There's a need for people who are willing to give back to the community. There's a need for attorneys of principle. We become, in that regard, the sentinel of justice.